Thank you for joining us tonight to celebrate entrepreneurship at its best. This afternoon um, at, uh, at the State of the College Luncheon, we had a bunch of you actively involved in writing headlines uh, for Babson in the year 2019. And one of our undergraduate students, Asa Carey, representing one of the tables, came up to the mic to identify his group's headline. And the group's headline was, entrepreneurship is a six-letter word. And he then said, think about it. So uh, this is entrepreneurship at its best. This is entrepreneurship as a six-letter word. And we're delighted to have with us two members of the Alumni Entrepreneur Hall of Fame. Deborah DeSantis, class of 85, who became a member in 2010. And Carlos Matos, Master 76, who was inducted in 2009. Where are you, Carlos? Just a few hours ago, we dedicated the Carlos J. Matos Hall, formerly known as Publishers Hall, which houses 44 healthy living students. A great evening for the Matos family, a great evening for Babson. Everybody who's here tonight has at least one thing in common. We're incredibly proud of Babson and with good reason. By now, many of you have seen a fact sheet entitled Babson Joins the Ranks of Elite Colleges. It shows how far we've come as an institution and the great company we're in, along an array of dimensions. And in the past few weeks, we've had even more reason to celebrate the value of a Babson education. Two weeks ago in its annual college salary report, Payscale ranked Babson as tied for eighth place nationally for mid-career salary of graduates. That's up from 11th place last year. Babson tops all Boston area colleges except for MIT and now has surpassed both Stanford and Harvard. Now that's a relatively mercenary announcement. And what I want to be able to do is contextualize that because the value of a Babson education can be measured in ways much beyond dollars. And what we're going to talk about here tonight is not dollars, we're going to talk about impact. And we're thrilled to be honoring Jeff Brown, class of 86, and Alberto Perlman, 98, tonight because of the impact they've had and continue to have and what that says about the value of a Babson education. Everybody in this room already knows that Babson is the only educator for entrepreneurship of all kinds. If you don't know that, uh, at the end of the evening, there'll be a lecture in the back corner, <laughs> and you will have to listen one more time until you get it right. And the Babson alumni that we're honoring tonight are just superb examples of entrepreneurial leaders who've achieved their impact in very different contexts. Although their ventures couldn't be more different, they are fundamentally connected. Consider this. 75% of all healthcare costs in the United States today are an outgrowth of lifestyle diseases. And the best way you can confront lifestyle diseases is through changes in how we eat and how we move, through nutrition and exercise. And Jeff and Alberto have found new and important ways to give people access to healthy lifestyles. Each has also created a brand that simply makes people feel good. When Jeff was a freshman at Babson, his family owned one grocery store. By the time he graduated, they had 13. He was the one who grew the business, and he did it all while a student. Joel Shulman, who's here with us tonight as host, a professor who remains close to Jeff, recalls that he wondered about how much Jeff was driving the expansion of the business until he learned more about Jeff's work and met Jeff's parents, who called him boss. <laughs> Jeff could have comfortably retired at the age of 24 after the business was sold. But he had a big vision, 
and he pioneered nationwide a new standard for the industry through his 10-store ShopRite supermarket chain. Six of these stores are in former food deserts, underinvested, low-income neighborhoods that other retails simply avoid because of high unemployment and crime rates. Each of these stores has made fresh foods available where up to this point fresh foods did not exist. Jeff showed that these stores could be profitable, and in fact, they've been a great success, providing jobs, many to ex-offenders, and offering a product mix tailored to the community's cultural preferences. Overall sales, revenue, and fresh product sales are on a par with the finest suburban stores. And there's more. Each store has also become a hub for its community, a safe environment where a range of services and products are provided. Every ShopRite store includes a community room that community groups can use for free. And now Jeff's experimenting with bringing other needed services to stores, like credit unions that offer ATM services and free checking. And more recently, he's increasing access to affordable health care in these communities by opening nonprofit clinics in these stores. Jeff was able to open stores in food desert areas of Philadelphia with the help of the Pennsylvania Fresh Food Financing Initiative, an innovative state program designed to increase the number of supermarkets and grocery stores in underserved communities across Pennsylvania. Jeff collaborated with government leaders to develop and gain support for this legislation. In 2009, Jeff and his wife Sandy founded Uplift Solutions to replicate their business model around the country and help other businesses to learn how to make this happen. And the message is spreading. Zoning and financial incentives like those that allow Jeff to open his shop rights have now been adopted by many other states. Indeed, President Obama has adopted the Fresh Food Financing Initiative as the template for a similar initiative nationwide. We're so delighted to have Jeff with us here tonight. Alberto followed a very different path. At the age of 22, he founded a media technology incubator that spawned several technology companies in Latin America. And when the dot-com bubble burst, Alberto headed to Miami. The Zumba fitness story started on a shoestring budget in Miami 11 years ago. Central to his story, is the role of his mother, who encouraged Alberto to start a business related to the fitness routine of her terrific aerobics instructor. And just to get it going, she arranged for Alberto to meet her trainer. Fast forward to today. Alberto has grown Zumba fitness classes into a global brand, with instructor academies, a line of apparel and accessories, music CDs, DVDs, and a lifestyle magazine. It is the world's largest branded fitness program. More than 14 million people take classes every week in over 150 countries. Now, you'll get a, a sense of this a little bit more later. The training of instructors is the central part of Alberto's business model. It's not about training them to be great Zumba fitness teachers. That's not just the game. It's about training them to be entrepreneurs. It gives them a toolkit to go out and build their own Zumba dance studios. Year after year, Alberto has been able to spot what his customers need and build a business around it. So about seven years ago, they started something called Zumba Gold at the gym at senior citizen centers and at retirement homes. Kids wanted something for themselves, so they started Zumba Tomics for children, Aqua Zumbas for all ages and is similar to water aerobics, while Zumba Toning is designed to enhance and build strength. Zumba Fitness transcends the gym. People Zumba at weddings. <laughs> they Zumba at fitness concert events. It's used in prisons and rehab centers for therapy. And throughout, Zumba Fitness regularly sponsors initiatives to raise money for an array of charities, including the Zumba Komen Partnership, the American Heart Association, and the Soccer for Peace Foundation. As the managing director of a prominent investment firm that has invested in Zumba told us recently, 
they are just scratching the surface of its potential. So what do Jeff and Alberto have in common? Clearly, they're both great innovators. And by the way, the backstory is that they showed all the signs of being resourceful entrepreneurs from a very young age. Both are scaling their models. Zumo Fitness has been globalized by Alberto, and Jeff aspires to have every city able to adopt the model he created. They both have influential mothers. All you moms here, finally recognition for the critical role that you play in your son's success. Jeff's mom long worked in the business and encouraged Jeff, and Alberto's made the connection that got him into the fitness business. Both even have a tie to Michelle Obama. The first lady is a Zumba fan and champion, and Jeff Brown was chosen as a guest of the first lady at President Obama's 2010 State of the Union address because of his leadership in addressing the food desert crisis. But the most important thing that Jeff and Alberto have in common is that they are quintessential entrepreneurs who represent Babson at its very best. At our reception, you saw displays from another group of alumni entrepreneurs who are doing Babson proud. We call them our rising stars. These rising stars have founded or co-founded businesses which are less than 10 years old, are making an impact in their marketplace, and their products or services are generating media attention. And I'd like to ask all of our 2012 rising stars to join Candy Brush and me on stage now uh, for recognition and the award of their certificate. We'll start with Jalila Bouchereb, class of 08. She founded Amal Oils, which manufactures and distributes organic, natural, and traditional Moroccan skincare products. These not only make a long-lasting impact on the skin, but also on the Moroccan communities with which Amal works by do donating a portion of its profits back to its women artisans. Very appropriately, Amal is the Arab Arabic word for hope. My good friend John Feynman, Masters 10, founded the nonprofit Inner City Weightlifting, which works with young people at the highest risk for violence by getting them off the streets and into the gym. Once there, John and his team worked to redirect young people away from gang involvement and towards more positive and complex goals, such as finishing school and getting a job. Students most committed are eligible for an in-house career track in personal training. Our next award goes to Sarah Granulati, Masters 10. The cool thing about my job is Sarah wins so many awards, and I often get invited to give it to her, so I actually believe I am her personal award concierge. <laughs> Wherever she goes, I get to announce that she's won yet another award. Sarah founded Coco Mama Foods, which in her words is on a quest to prove that nutrition and happy taste buds can coexist. Using ancient grains, Coco Mama products are gluten-free, packed with wholesome ingredients, and ready to eat. Sarah's nutritious and tasty products are now in 240 stores and growing. Sarah, by the way, was the first solo woman to win the top prize in our MBA business competition in the year 2010. Jackie Graham, class of 09, co-founded Emma Graham Designs, or EGD, a lifestyle clothing brand targeting college and young professional women. The company designs, manufactures, and sells what a recent media story calls stylish and distinctive clothing. EGD clothing is available at over 70 retail outlets in greater Boston and expanding rapidly. 
The company also is now building out an e-commerce platform where customers can design their own unique outfits. Declan. <laughs> Joseph Lakach, class of 09, founded Dreamwater. It's the antidote for five-hour energy. <laughs> Thank the Lord somebody came up with this. This is the first water that helps you to relax and fall asleep. It's a blend of three natural sleep-enhancing ingredients, is completely drug-free, has no calories, which means you lose weight while you sleep, <laughs> and allows you to wake feeling refreshed without side effects. And it's available in several sizes for those who want to take a long nap. <laughs> One that's perfect for long plane rides. So, Joseph. <laughs> Miha Mikek, Masters 06, founded Seltra, the industry leader for rich media, mobile advertising and analytics. I was recounting with Miha tonight. I met him just as he was coming out of here and beginning this business, and quite honestly, at that point, all we could say was it was new, it was untested, and it was in a space uh, that a lot of people didn't understand. Now, he is unquestionably the industry leader. Its flagship product, Ad Creator, enables anyone, even those without any software development skills, to quickly create, manage, and measure ad campaigns. Earlier this month, Seltra was named one of the most innovative tech companies of the year in the 2012 American Business Awards, the second industry recognition for Seltra just this fall. Another friend, Michael Sankara, Masters 09, co-founded Custom Made, an online marketplace that connects consumers looking for furniture, woodwork, ceramics, and other crafts with high-quality artisans near them. The goal is to give consumers a custom-built experience at a price that's competitive with traditional retail. Mike, who started the business in the belief that buying custom from local makers has to be a viable alternative to buying from big box retailers, has evolved in an entirely new approach to e-commerce and retail. Mike. Tavinder Full, Masters 06, founded Roost, which provides baby-proofing products to ensure a safe, fun, worry-free home. The company breaks new ground in the category of modern and stylish child safety products. Unlike its competitors, Roost products do not damage furniture, are aesthetically pleasing, and are tested to be non-toxic and made from materials that are completely recyclable. Tavinder. Our passion for Babson is based on making it possible for today's and tomorrow's students to do what the outstanding alumni we're honoring tonight have accomplished. Our students and our alumni will keep creating something new, and all of us will take great pride in their extraordinary accomplishments. So we've acknowledged Jeff and Alberto, we've celebrated our rising stars, now it's your job to enjoy your dinner, and we'll be back with the rest of the night's program at the end of dinner. Thanks, guys. Good evening. I hesitate to break up this wonderful conviviality, but um, we have some important awards to give. I'm really delighted to be here this evening to celebrate our distinguished alumni, Jeff Brown and Alberto Perelman, and I'd also like to recognize our rising stars. I'd also like to welcome our faculty, our staff, our alums, and especially Steve Brown's, Jeff Brown's two sons, Leonard and Scott. As President Schlesinger noted earlier, we celebrate entrepreneurship of all kinds. And this means social ventures, 
franchises, corporate ventures, family businesses, cooperatives, technology startups, nonprofit, and for profit businesses. 100% of our students take entrepreneurship classes, and more than 70% take one of our 107 entrepreneurship classes, more than any school in the entire world. <laughs> Our Butler Venture Accelerator has 350 students in it, and our plans are to grow this accelerator to more than 400 students sometimes next year. Our accelerator, under the direction of Janet Stromitis, our managing director, who's over here, <laughs> is leveled. We have three levels, explore, pursue, and launch and grow but it's unique among colleges and universities around the world for three reasons. First of all, we don't focus just on fast growth, high technology, equity funded ventures. Instead, we focus on learning. How students learn the method of entrepreneurship and how they apply entrepreneurial skills, both creative and predictive approaches to solve problems and create and discover opportunities. Second, our accelerator is open to every single student on campus. And we're also accepting some alumni businesses into our accelerator. It's for every form of business, because we believe that students should have access to entrepreneurial learning skills, whether they have an idea for a business or not, whether they're commercializing technology, whether they're in a family business, or whether they're in a nonprofit or solo self-employed. Third, our accelerator is different because it's connected to the curriculum. The same faculty advisors in our accelerator also teach classes. And this is not the case at most other schools. In fact, a lot of times the accelerator or the incubator is located off campus and has little connection to what's going on on campus. But in our accelerator, our students are connected to the faculty and so the same people that are teaching in the classroom are also supporting student ventures, and therefore the learning is consistent. Several of our rising stars took advantage of our accelerator, and a couple took advantage of our summer venture program. It's a 10-week intensive program funded by an alum with dedicated mentors where students work on their businesses full-time over 10 weeks. We've had students from Wellesley, from Olin, we've had part-timers, full-timers, graduates, undergraduates, all working on progressing their businesses. Sarah Gragnanotti, I think, is, was in the Summer Venture Program last year. I'll also mention that our 47 entrepreneurship faculty, more than any faculty in the world, are committed to helping our students succeed both in the classroom and in co-curricular activities. Co-curricular activities we have include our world-famous rocket pitch, our beta challenge, which is our Babson Entrepreneurial Thought and Action Challenge, and a host of other things. And I'll venture to say that many of our rising stars took advantage of those activities as well. So our focus here at Babson in the classroom and in our co-curricular activities is to teach students entrepreneurial skills that can serve them in any context or situation. By learning how to create and identify opportunities, acquire resources, and build the leadership team to create something of economic or social value, they become entrepreneurial leaders that can practice entrepreneurship of all kinds. Entrepreneurial leaders leave a lasting imprint. They make an impact. Tonight's celebration is about impact. And as President Schlesinger detailed earlier, both of our honorees, Jeff Brown and Alberto Perelman, have made substantial impact, founding businesses that have both social and economic benefits for individuals, the local community, society, and for business. And so in keeping with Babson's celebration of entrepreneurship of all kinds, both Jeff and Alberto have founded hybrid ventures that have social and economic missions tied to social and economic benefits. And it's fair to say our rising stars are also creating businesses that will have impact, both socially and economically. I'll also mention that we're planning to do, to try to capture the impact of all of our Babson alumni. So stay tuned because you will be getting a survey from us very soon. And we're going to ask you about your experiences 
in entrepreneurship of all kinds, so please look for the survey and complete it when you get it. I'm also pleased to introduce our two honorees who will share the stories leading to the significant impact on individuals, business, community, and society. Jeff Brown is the founder and president and CEO of Brown Superstores, a 10-store supermarket chain trading under the name, under the ShopRite banner. You've already heard about many of his outstanding contributions, and now we'll hear more about his story. Please join me on stage, Jeff. A lot of very kind words, thank you. I always did fit in at Babson. This is a great honor, but what's even more important, boy, is exciting to be at Babson. I was so excited when I first came here, and I cannot believe with the people that we've entrusted to run Babson, the unbelievable things that have been done here. I'm so charged up from coming here, I have to temper it a little bit, because I'm afraid I'm gonna send my kids in the opposite direction. I have to play it like I'm not that excited. <laughs> I have to tell you, everyone I meet, I tell about what I learned at Babson, about my experiences at Babson, and I can remember so clearly, even though my memory's not that great, I, was, I went to the guidance counselor to ask where should I go to school, and I told them I want to be a grocery entrepreneur, I want to open these grocery stores, I want to serve the poor, and I'm going on and on about what I want to do, and they told me, uh, there's only one school that you could go to. Only Babson would take someone like you. <laughs> so th thank God she figured that out. It made life easy for me. And when I got here, maybe it was by the second year, I had a, a fabulous semester with uh, Jeffrey Timmons uh, taking his uh, opening entrepreneurship class. And Joel Shulman if you can imagine both of them in the same semester. And it, it, I reflect back on how they took my raw energy and ambition to do what I was gonna do and broke it down to the things that I needed to do to mitigate risk, to improve my opportunity, to manage the business better. And those things, as soon as I got into business, I did what I was taught to do. And it, it, it was interesting that everyone I dealt with thought it was unusual. Every bank I met with, and from the startup, I always got financing. Every single time, every store, every venture, from the startup. And every uh, bank said, How, where'd you learn to make a business plan like this? Now, that's what Babson taught me. And then I actually did write the business plan of Brown Superstores here at Babson. And I, I actually was in the Sorison co uh, competition. I think it might have been the first one. The business plan I wrote I graduated from Babson. I worked for my dad for a short time. We sold, out, we sold the business, and I planned to implement my Babson business plan. And when I went to Wake Fern, who's the wholesaler, they said, everybody knows you can't make money serving the poor, so we really can't bring you in if that's your plan. If you want to uh, take a suburban store, we'll let you in. At that time, Philadelphia did not have shop rights in the Philadelphia area. And I had, I had taken over the one shop right that had failed uh, to reopen it and to prove we could make the brand work in Philadelphia. If you know anything about the supermarket business, market share changes very, very slowly over decades. So what I attempted to do, I found out later, was apparently a pretty tough job. We opened that first store. We made it a success. We later opened the second store and a third store. Today, our 10 stores in Philadelphia have achieved a leading market share in the city. And what... <laughs> our business today does about 300% average volume per store of our competitors. And what's interesting, the thing that really excelled my business was a, a meeting that I was invited to by a nonprofit, the Food Trust. And the Food Trust was sort of like a hippie-ish type of food organization, and that was kind of new back then. And they invited all the grocers in the industry and, and the leader at Philadelphia at the time, I'm not gonna say their name, um, they, their government person pulled me aside and said, look, we're worried about the industry getting sued, so uh, you're a young kid, you don't know too much, just follow us, we're gonna nod our heads, and when this thing ends, we're gonna leave, because this problem is the government's problem, not our problem. 
I thought that was kind of odd because we didn't even hear what they said and they had already determined that it wasn't possible to sort of rethink how we did our business. And they went to present evidence of this huge obesity problem that's gotten worse every year for a really long time. The connection between that and our national health care problem, videos of young eight-year-old and nine-year-old kids uh, that live in poverty and already have type 2 diabetes, and the government standing there in Pennsylvania and saying, we have money to fix this problem. Isn't there any grocer that can help out? And apparently at that time, there wasn't anyone except for me. And I stayed with uh, uh, representatives from the Appropriations Committee and TRF, uh, which uh, is a CDFI. And we figured out the uh, Fresh Food Financing Initiative. And uh, because we figured it out, I figured I better open the first store. I immediately found a closed store in a, in a, in a neighborhood that had tremendous gun violence, and it had formerly closed uh, due to gun violence problems. Of course, I had to go to back to home to my wife and explain to her that uh, I have this business plan. I'm going to open this store in southwest Philadelphia. There's a little gun violence problem. There's some ethnic uh, problems where people are fighting, but we can figure it out. I'm pretty sure I have an idea. She wasn't immediately thrilled, but she, she eventually gave in. Then I had to go talk to my management team. And as you can imagine, and then my lenders. So you imagine I had a lot of selling to do. That store opened up, and its very first week, it did 400% more than the week that my chain competitor owned it before, and continued to grow and made a profit from the very first day, which caught national attention. And we spent a number of years of taking visitors from all over the country to understand why we could open up a store and make money, do business and serve fresh food, and no one else could. While that was going on, we had continued to add more stores. Each iteration, we had figured out how to do something a little bit better. Uh, one of the things that helped me with that is regular meetings with all our community leaders. And that very first store, I figured, if this is an, an, an intractable problem that can't be solved, let's work with everyone because we're going to need everyone if we're going to figure it out. And when I told my management team who I wanted to invite, I said, let's invite everyone we normally would never consider meeting with. I want all the Baptists, the Methodists, the Muslims, I want the NAACP. If they live in this neighborhood, I want them at the meeting. I want to figure out how we're going to make this work. And uh, I figured this was a good approach. The first thing they did was tore my head off and took out, took out on me all their frustrations with society. And after about an hour of that, they eventually talked about what could make this work. And it's interesting, the very same people that many, pe many businessmen are concerned about have fought to help me all along and them being on my side has been a key part of our success. And we've continued to meet with them. And we've continued to learn things like Muslims eat halal food. If you want to sell Muslims groceries, you got to have halal food. We've race by race, culture by culture, religion by religion, have figured out opportunities to sell more food to people, to make more money, and to solve health problems uh, in the process. The same people explained that, hey, Jeff, you figured out this food thing. We don't have a doctor. Can you help us out with that? led us to open up our first health clinic. We have pharmacies in all the stores. And later they explained how predators take advantage of them. And we had figured out a business model for a credit union to have a credit union that doesn't charge fees for the basic services and, and also allows people to have a zero balance account. By the way, all these things make money. They seem altruistic, but every, the, all the people I've partnered with have made a profit. And after a lot of this, um, it caught the attention of the Obama administration, who had come to visit, first with staff, then they invited me to the White House to explain my business model, and then they sent a number of cabinet secretaries to get a tour of one of our stores and, and to figure out how we could do this nationally, and we worked with them ever since. Uh, that, that platform caused us to negotiate with um, uh, the, the White House about what would a national program look like and how much would it cost and how we would finance it. And in the process of that, of that negotiations, uh, they kept on saying to me, are we, are we going to need entrepreneurs like you? Because I don't know if we have them. I don't know if this country produces uh, people that think like you do. And that's a, that's a risk that we have. Tell us how we can overcome that. And with a lot of pr uh, pressure, I eventually opened up Uplift Solutions, and my idea is to take uh, executives that wanted to do something different uh, from my company and let them uh, spend some time in the nonprofit and share what we learned how to do nationally. Uplift Solutions today uh, works in 24 states on, on some process of rolling out this kind of format, and we have uh, technical assistance, financing assistance, uh, 
uh, training for entrepreneurs, including they come to our business in Philadelphia and train. We do classroom training. Uh, we offer a, a turnkey model for the clinics and a turnkey model for the credit unions. And uh, we, we have uh, grown over 100% a year for the last four years at the nonprofit. And it feels like this is a tougher business than the grocery business. And it, it's actually the same thing. It's using what I learned at Babson, what I learned how to do. It's business planning. It's uh, working with a blank piece of paper and figuring out how we could reorganize instead of a grocery store society to produce a different result than the one we're getting. It's my hope to eventually end food deserts entirely in the US, and I, I do believe that we could get it done. Which all comes back to Babson. Why did Babson have such a big impact on my life and how I operate, how I think about things? And I was thinking about that and thinking about my own kids. So of my own kids, I have two, two kids not here tonight, very, very smart, I love them. They're not the entrepreneurs in the family. And I have two kids here that I think are the entrepreneurs. But Lenny said I'm not allowed to talk about them, so I'm not going to talk about them. But Scotty said, go ahead, embarrass me, I don't care. So all my kids have worked in the grocery business. Uh, most of them have worked in the bakery. There's an entry-level job panning out cookies. And the panning out cookies job, anyone can do. We've trained hundreds of people to do this job. You open a box of frozen cookies, you break them all up, you pan them out evenly on the tray, and you stick it in the oven. And all those hundred, hundred and some people that I've trained, including my own kids, uh, uh, some of which are extraordinarily brilliant, have methodically done the job the same way, not questioning whether there was a better way. So Scotty, my youngest son, we sent him to get the training everyone else got, and he noticed that the corners of the cookies break off and they all get thrown out. And he takes it upon himself to aggregate all those little corners, and each box of cookies that he makes, he makes a cookie cake, he brings back another $12.99 a box. <laughs> I think, my personal opinion, Scotty's got to go to Babson. That's my personal opinion. And, uh, and when it, it gets back to our country, and if you think about our country, the people that say that there's no opportunity left, they have to be completely wrong. Because if there was, why did Scotty find those opportunities to collect those corners that so many other people before him did, just did not see? Uh, my day at Babson here was exhilarating. I think we are completely on the right track. And I think my Babson diploma is going to continue to appreciate like all of yours. Thank you so much for this great honor. Thank you very much. That was great. It's wonderful to hear how you got started, and it was wonderful to hear the inspiration and how you've moved forward. So thank you very much. That was great. Alberto Perman is the chief executive officer and co-founder of Zumba Fitness Center, the largest branded fitness center in the world. And Alberto was unable to be here today because of the birth of his third child. So he has a very good excuse. <laughs> Um, and he sent his deepest appreciation, and he has sent his thank you via video. Hello, everyone. It is a true honor to accept this award. I'd like to thank Carol Hacker and President Schlesinger and everybody else who made this possible. I can't be there today because my wife and I just had a baby, so I have to be with them at this time. This business was not an overnight success. It took us 11 years to get to where we are now. And there were many ups and downs, there were many painful moments, there were many celebrations. And I think that Babson College was the best way to prepare for this journey. So what makes Babson different? There's a lot of schools that offer Marketing 101, Managerial Accounting, uh, Operations Research, and the Statistics class that I know you guys all love. But the difference with Babson is the energy. As you're going to school with 1,600 other people who want to start businesses. Everyone talks about starting businesses. Everybody talks about entrepreneurship. You can be walking into 
trim cafeteria, not sure if it still exists, or the library, or Van Winkle, and everybody's talking about businesses that they want to start. And that energy just makes it magical and it creates the perfect breeding ground for future entrepreneurs. I'm very thankful that I was able to attend Babson College and I really feel that it made a huge difference in my life. I'm gonna tell you a little story about entrepreneurial spirit. And I think that some of that energy that I gained while I was at Babson helped me uh, figure out what to do. So we were selling DVDs all over the world, fitness DVDs. And we started selling them in Mexico. And as many of you know, there is rampant piracy in Mexico and in all over Latin America. So for every DVD that we were selling via television, there were 10 DVDs that were being sold in street corners and in any place where you could find DVDs. And they were all pirated DVDs. So at the beginning, we were very nervous about the loss of, of revenue from these DVDs. However, we started thinking about how we could turn this into an advantage for us or how we could turn this into, into something that could benefit us. So we started putting marketing messages inside the DVDs. So you would be playing your DVD and it would say, go take a live Zumba class or uh, call your local gym to find a live Zumba class. And people started attending all these Zumba classes and our instructors started getting more students and that fueled our certification business. So in essence, we were able to turn these pirates into a street marketing team for us. I've been meeting a lot of young Babson alumni recently and I'm happy to say that I can see that the Babson entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. And I look forward to many more great entrepreneurs coming from Babson College. Thank you again for this incredible honor and I hope to visit campus soon. So once again, um, our sincere congratulations to both Jeff and Alberto um, for their most impactful contributions to business and society. And so after tonight's meal, we can all use a Zumba fitness class. And so you're invited to Zumba at the Webster Gym tomorrow at 7.30. That is 7.30 a.m. And so thank you all for coming tonight. We hope you had a great evening. Thank you.